Okay, Bob, let's do it. This is Maggie, an African elephant. Once upon a time, she lived in Alaska. It sounds like a fairy tale, but it was very real. From 1983 to 2007, I know this because I was there too from 83 to 2011. Her story starts with the Alaska Zoo, which all started with a toilet paper contest. In 1966, Jack Snyder, an Anchorage store owner, entered a national contest. The store that sold the most toilet paper in a month won. The prize, either $3,000 cash or a baby elephant. Pretty kitschy. Jack somehow won the contest and, surprise, he chose the baby elephant. In comes baby Annabelle, an 18-month-old, three-and-a-half-foot-tall nugget of an Asian elephant. Initially, Jack kept her in his store's parking lot and took her on tour, flying all around the state, spreading goodwill and hobnobbing with celebrities and politicians. Eventually, Jack gave her to Sammy Sewell, who was rich and happened to have the only heated barn in town. Sammy had collected a few other random rescues and decided to start a zoo, hence the Alaska Zoo was born. I should mention, before baby Annabelle stepped off that plane in 1966, this is what pachyderms in Alaska look like. A little different. So Annabelle lives solo until Maggie shows up. Shortly after her birth in Zimbabwe in 1982, Maggie was orphaned, captured, sold to a game farm in New York State, and then finally sold to the Alaska Zoo, who bought her as a friend and companion for Annabelle. Tiny baby Maggie showed up in Anchorage in 1983, but unfortunately Maggie and Annabelle did not fall madly in love with each other. Turns out Asian and African elephants don't usually get along. Maggie got a bad reputation for being kind of a bitch, and Annabelle's health declined. In 1997, when she was 33, we lost Annabelle to a foot infection, a top health issue for captive elephants. Standing on cold concrete most of the time eventually takes its toll on those sensitive feet. So then we were back down to one pachyderm in Alaska. The Alaska Zoo fielded complaints for years. Maggie's living space was too small, the Alaska climate way too cold, her isolation from other elephants was cruel, but the zoo and even quite a few locals argued she was an educational tool and a beloved fixture of our community. This is where I come in. I was raised to be ridiculously kind to animals. Our pets were family members, borderline more important than our human members. So when I was 19, studying pre-law, and met Diane, a 75-year-old fierce animal activist. I was immediately captivated by her work to protect and rescue animals. One day, Diane asked me which animal I was most passionate about in the world. I told her elephants, naturally, as a girl from Alaska. She said, then you should be helping Maggie. And that's when I joined the crusade to free Maggie. And my career path turned from law to fundraising. Sorry, Dad. <laughs> so Diane and I helped form Friends of Maggie, a group to put pressure on the zoo, get press coverage, and organize protests. The zoo did acknowledge Maggie was overweight, but not that she was lonely. Remember, she hated Annabelle. So in 2004, the zoo decided Maggie was staying in Alaska, but they had a solution to her obesity. They would, <laughs> they would invest $150,000 on a gigantic, one-of-a-kind, 9,000-pound treadmill, the one and only elephant treadmill in the world, ladies and gentlemen. And this would get her fit. She literally never used it. <laughs> Needless to say, she was miserable and ailing. Friends of Maggie ramped up our campaign and started getting national attention from organizations and press. But in 2007, Maggie was find, found lying on her side and couldn't, or maybe wouldn't, get up. A dangerous and potentially deadly position for an elephant, it took zookeepers, firefighters, and a towing company 19 hours to get Maggie back on her feet. After that, and mounting national pressure, the zoo finally gave in. They told us if we handled all the logistics, location, transportation, funding, they would let her go. We already had a new home, a beautiful home in California, a sanctuary called Paws, but getting her there would be really expensive, like hundreds of thousands of dollars. So I started writing letters to any celebrity animal activist I could think of, 
Jane Fonda, Leo DiCaprio, Pamela Anderson, Paul McCartney, but this guy came to our rescue. My hero, Bob Barker. Bob gave us $1 million to get Maggie out of Alaska. So we had a new home, we had funding, now we had to deal with transportation. Pretty tricky, FedEx doesn't ship four-ton elephants. But Angel Face Bob Barker pulled some strings with the Air Force and Operation Maggie migration began. At about 1 p.m. on November 1st, 2007, Maggie walked calmly into her specially designed 10,000 pound crate, one of the last times you'll see those chains on her ankles. She was loaded onto one of the largest cargo jets made, a C-17 Globemaster, and flown 2,000 miles to California. The entire trip door to door took about 20 hours. Veterinarians were with her the whole time, checking her vitals and giving her water and all of her favorite treaties, peanuts, apples, bananas, and licorice, of course. And that was 11 years one week ago. Today, Maggie enjoys warm weather, a spacious 2,000 acre habitat, and her African elephant friends. Lulu appears to be her bestie. She's no longer known as ornery, but is said to manipulate and con her elephant friends who supposedly let her break all the rules, which I love. And more good news, Alaska is again devoid of pachyderms and Bob Barker is still saving lives. He put up another million dollars to save three elephants in Toronto and is fighting hard to free Lucy, an elephant ailing right now in Edmonton. And our Maggie still lives happily ever after. Thank you.